Hello everyone! Welcome to our online lecture. I am Peter Eunice and I will discuss with you all about Eric Erikson's theory of psychosocial development. But before that, who is Eric Erikson? He was a super smart person who figured out how people learn and grow. He said that as we grow up, we face different challenges, like learning to trust others or figuring out who we are. His ideas help us understand why we feel or act the way we do. Basically, Eric Erikson's ideas are like puzzle pieces. They help us understand who we are even more better. Moving on to the first stage, infancy, trust versus mistrust. An infant or a baby learns to trust when their needs are met with love and care. If the babies feel safe and cared for, they automatically develop a sense of trust. However, if their needs aren't met with great love and care, mistrust will happen. For example, when a baby cries and the parent responds with a warm smile, warm hug, and a bottle of milk, the baby will trust them and develop a sense of trust. But if the baby is ignored, they will think that whenever they cry like that again, they will be ignored and not taken care of. That's why remember to always take care of your babies. On to the next stage, autonomy versus shame and doubt. So, the thing is, toddlers are all about wanting to do something on their own, some things on their own, like tying their shoes or sometimes even doing their homeworks. They will feel proud and empowered when they are praised for their efforts. However, if they are continuously told that they are wrong or that they are restricted from exploring new things, they will be ashamed about it, having them doubt themselves and their abilities. For example, when a toddler tripped from running around chasing his friends at the park and their caregiver told them that they got this, they will feel confident and stand up on their feet again. However, if the parents scold him for being too naughty or clumsy, he will feel ashamed about it and he will start to doubt himself and feel embarrassed. That's why, always cheer for your kid! On to the next stage, initiative versus guilt. In this stage, kids start on exploring new things, trying new things. So, when they are encouraged to take on challenges and trying new things and eventually get praised for their efforts, they will feel confident and more eager to learn more. However, if they are criticized or made to feel bad about their curiosity, they would feel guilty about trying new things. For example, when a kid is leading his or her friends, an activity for their playtime, they will feel encouraged and motivated to need more if their efforts are praised. Like telling them how good of a leader they are, they will feel motivated. But if he or she will get scolded for being too naughty or for causing trouble, he will feel guilty. You know, making him afraid or scared for taking risks and initiative in the future. That's why, instead of scolding them, support them. Okay? Now, moving on to the fourth stage, the industry versus inferiority. During this stage, the kids are eager to showcase their competence and compete for success in various tasks. The concept of industry is about the kids' development in a sense of mastery and productivity. Children at this stage are eager to learn new goals and new things in life. That is why when they are encouraged and recognized for their efforts, they will develop a sense of competence and confidence in everything they do. But if the kid faces lots of criticisms without enough support, they will doubt their ability leading to inferiority. This will make them feel that they are not capable of doing something very well compared to their peers. For example, 
a kid is learning how to play a guitar, but is constantly being frustrated because he cannot do it properly. So, when his or her mentor encourages him to keep on practicing and tells him or her that he got this, he will feel more motivated to keep on practicing and perfecting the piece. However, if the mentor does otherwise, the kid will feel demotivated to succeed in learning guitar and will start doubting himself or his abilities. That is why, instead of criticizing them, support them instead. Moving on to the fifth stage, identity versus role confusion. So, this stage is about the search of self-identity and the exploration of various social roles. During this stage, teenagers explore different roles and identities, experimenting with various interests, relationships, and societal expectations. For example, when a teenager who's trying out new hobbies, when he or she receives encouragement and support, the teenager is more likely to develop a sense of confidence in self. However, they can manifest uncertainty about who they are and the direction of their future if they encounter pressures that limit their exploration. That is why just support them. On to the sixth stage, intimacy versus isolation. The concept of this stage is about the exploration of intimate relationships and the pursuit of meaningful connections with others. For example, a young adult is investing time and effort into nurturing a romantic relationship with a partner. If they are able to cultivate the sense of intimacy and mutual understanding in their relationship, they will experience a deep sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. However, those who find it difficult to build strong relationships and repeated rejections may feel loneliness and isolation. Love will come. Okay? Okay. Don't find love. Let love find you. On to the seventh stage. Generativity versus stagnation. In this stage, people aim to find satisfaction and purpose in their careers, relationships, and their contributions in the society. Middle-aged adults aspire to make a great impact on the society or community and leave behind a meaningful legacy. Finally, the last chapter, Ego Integrity versus Despair. This stage is about the acceptance of one's life and the search for meaning and acceptance of one's past. During this phase, the elderly aims to make sense of their lives, reconcile past conflicts and achievements, and find peace and commitment in their later years. For example, they may spend time reminiscing with their loved ones, sharing life stories, and finding joy in relationships and memories. Through reflection and acceptance, they achieve a sense of ego integrity, feeling at peace with themselves and their life's journey. However, if they struggle to accept past experiences or feel burdened by regrets, conflicts, or sense of meaningless, they may experience despair. That is why, live your life to the fullest. Live your life like there is no tomorrow. Thank you very much.